Welcome back to the Noise Cancelling Podcast, the only podcast on the internet that gathers all the greatest tech journalists from all over the interwebs to break down this week in tech, entertainment, and gaming news for your listening pleasure. Listening? Can I even say listening at this point? Probably not. Uh, If you enjoy this kind of content, please do consider subscribing on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, because we want you along for future episodes. But without further ado, let's jump into the show and have our wonderful guests introduce themselves, starting with Sheree. Hi, I'm Sheree L. Smith, editor-in-chief of Laptop Mag. And while I might not be one of the greatest tech journalists out there, I would love to be your favorite. You are absolutely the greatest in my eyes, Sheree Swider. Hey, I'm Matt Swider, uh, the managing editor at Tech Radar. Uh, I work with Gareth Beavis, who I told uh, the podcast was at a different time, so he, I guess he's not here. No, unfortunately, Gareth is feeling a little under the weather, and so I am taking his spot. But before we get to my introduction, Adam, take it away. Hello, my name is Adam Fajestica. I'm a senior staff writer at Tech Radar, and I'm at least in the top 50 of the best tech journalists out there. I'm going to throw it out there. I'd call you top 10, mate, 100%. Well, you're very kind. Especially now that, like I said, Gareth is feeling under the weather. He's dropped out of the top 10, so you can take his spot in there for sure. (laughs) Gareth was Um, at least number 50, and I think I've usurped him there. 100%, 100%. Uh, Yes, I am not your usual host, Gareth Beathers. Unfortunately, he will be back next week, I'm sure. Uh, But I am Matt Phillips, Tech Radar's video producer, and I'll be taking his spot this week. Um, And without further ado, then, let's jump into the start of the podcast. We always start the podcast in the same way with the big question. This is just a nice little icebreaker. So you can get to know our guests this week. Um, And this week, it's all based around this Japanese company that has started selling smart glasses throughout Asia that help correct nearsightedness. Really useful stuff. But we've heard about smart glasses for what feels like a decade at this point. Apple is supposed to be bringing one out. Google Glass came out and nobody cared. And then Google Glass came out again and nobody cared again. So I want to know what is the killer feature? What is the feature that should come out for any smart glasses that would convince you to go out and buy a pair tomorrow. Swider, I'm going to come to you first because you are the only person I know on planet Earth that has owned a pair of Google Glass. (laughs) What I really like that some people came up with a design for this, um, getting directions on where to go. So you're like they they have in in the US this uh, bank commercial where you follow the green line. I want that in real life, um, mainly for whenever we go outside again. But Whenever you're in Las Vegas for CES, for example, it's so massive there, and there are so many different rooms to go in and everything. I want turn-by-turn directions sitting in front of me. That's what I want from AR and, and glasses-based AR. Yeah, I actually love that. One, one of the first things that I always sort of come up against when you play like a new driving game is how it deals with its like waypoint system, mm. right? Like GTA mm. or Need for Speed or any of these things. And the best ones are where they have like, yeah, massive... AR like signs that guide you around corners and stuff like that. So I'm all for that. Whether or not you need it for a pace of walking, I don't know. I'll give you two examples where you need it. You need it at like a baseball game or like any stadium where you have to constantly ask like breadcrumbs, you're following breadcrumbs to ask, oh yeah, where's my seat? Where where's this section? Or down the grocery aisle. So you automatically input your shopping list and then you uh go down the aisles and you're like, oh, it's right here. I see the little indicator for it. I love that would it. be awesome. Yeah, I love that. Although I feel like we're probably going to get to a point sooner than that where grocery stores are no longer a thing, <laughs> especially with COVID. <laughs> I'm never going in one ever again. That uh, is true. I don't shop. <laughs> Adam, let's come to you then. What is the killer smart glass feature that you want to see? Yeah, so uh, as a big sports fan, I would love a pair of glasses that could give me all my scores like a ticker going along. So I'm constantly updated on the Saturday. Rather than having to get my phone out or have the TV on, I can see instant updates of which team's leading, who scored, and that would tie nicely for uh, giving me uh, basically reminders that my fantasy team is doing well, which is another thing that I'm heavily invested in. So yeah, basically, there's a show in the UK called uh, Gillette Soccer Saturday. There is other shows available, but I (laughs) love sitting down, watching that, seeing all the updates, seeing when the goals go in in the soccer games, and yeah, to have that in there like a heads-up display right in front of me would be great. Interesting stuff. It's it's relatively close to mine, although I feel like mine's a little bit cheating. Ooh. But we're gonna go to Sheree first. All right. So I have two because and and I'm proud of myself because this is my first time hearing the question. There was no pre-production. So what's <laughs> gonna what's gonna be practical and what's Don't gonna give be a- them that look behind the curtain, Sheree? It's a polished show. It's a program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one's gonna be practical and one's gonna be off the wall. 
So the first, the practical one, um, I would there, and this is based off of something that one of the apps, oh, Blackberry used to have this app and I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me, but it was like AR and you would, uh, put it, you would put the phone in front of a restaurant and like, uh, reviews and the menu would come up in front of the restaurant. So I would want the menu portion of that to come by like i just look at a random restaurant and see like maybe i haven't been there i see the menu i can scroll up scroll that like that's that's the practical now for the impractical and it takes a little <laughs> bit of watchdogs um and it throws a little bit of love connection in there so i would like there to be a dating app and if you opt in and you set your parameters on what you want people to see. People that are signed into the app could just be walking down the street and look and be like, oh, well, such and such is looking for this, this, and this. Oh, they're into that. Okay, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> <Keep walking. laughs> I kind of like feel, that. I feel yeah. like we're getting into stalker territory very quickly and easily there, <laughs> there aren't we? There some privacy issues for sure, but I think yeah. That, yeah, I can, I can but, imagine that. As Sheree said, it's opt in. So yes. if you want to, you know, be like that, and you're okay with the voyeurism and people looking into what you're into, uh, I, I like that. Also, it won't waste my time. Back in the day, when I would go to a bar and be like, "Oh, I've been talking to this person," and oh, after you know three hours, they're not single, like something like that. That's a good so, point. Yeah, I want to see like going off of what Sheree said. <laughs> The Sims icon, that little uh, <laughs> diamond over single yeah. people. Yeah, and also the co the color of their little icon depends on their mood as well. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like and you could right, have like a I history as well, like you know, divorcee or yeah, you know, yeah, all the looking, whatever info it casual, that they, whatever info they're willing to share on that platform, you would be able to see. So, like if you, like the uh, uh, their pronouns, preferences uh things they like to do intimately or not intimately whatever whatever you want to put out there <laughs> i feel like there's probably a business case for this that is a lighter stepping stone towards it like if you're at ces right and you start getting like this person works for this place and they do this and then it's like a networking thing and then we can eventually get to the like more crude <laughs> relationship <laughs> side of our app but uh so this matt, time next year we'll be millionaires i'm sure so matt what you're saying is business before business Woo! Hey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so my idea was more based around hololens i think hololens is probably the mm. most successful quote unquote version of ar glasses we've seen so far and going back to what adam was saying about sport i think it would be very cool to be able to put on my glasses look at my coffee table and the kind of stadium be projected onto the coffee table and then i can watch the game from that sort of bird's eye view of oh, whatever game mm. I'm watching, or I can say, I want to sit in this seat, and then VR style, I get transported to that seat in the stadium. Um, and that's my idea. And I can't give myself the points because that's naff. Uh, but any, any feedback on that idea? Are there any glaring issues with I like that idea? It. I mean, I if you had a small really stadium a on the table, it would kind of look like you're looking at ants. But I, if you can go into the seat view, then yeah, that would, that would work. But... Even just seeing the stadium on match day would be kind of cool. Yeah, it kind of blows my mind that nobody's done it already. With, with sort of VR glasses or VR goggles becoming more and more of a thing and people going to stadiums, understandably becoming less and less of a thing over the past year or so, it blows my mind that there's not already a thing where you pay Sky Sports so much per month and you get mm. to just sit in the stadium to watch the game. Did they do it for tennis? I feel like Wimbledon might have experimented with some VR. Did they really? And the NBA yeah, definitely ago. does it. The NBA oh. does it, and um, oh, does it? Cool. Uh, so does the NFL, because uh, maybe, I want to say three years ago, I went to one of those demos at a Giants uh, game, and uh, Reggie Bush was the host of the show, and I met Reggie, and they walked me through, like, the camera set up, and, like, so, like, in the U.S., they, uh, we're definitely experimenting with it. You can do basketball, you can do football. I think that you can start to do boxing. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It seems like such a, a low effort thing. Like you just set up one VR camera and you can sell that seat essentially a million times. You know what I mean? And then I remember when uh, PlayStation VR first got announced, Sony bought a stadium, and it's like the Sony Stadium. I can't remember where it is now. I think it's mainly a music venue as well. But I thought for sure, oh, they're gonna sell like a, a Netflix style monthly pass with your PSVR, 
where you just get to be front row for all of these concerts, all of these shows that are going to be going on. And I, maybe, like you say, it's it's more uh, out there than I than I aware of. And if that is the case, then I apologize. But man, I just feel like it should have been everywhere by mm-hmm. now. But well, it's also, it's a problem of adoption. You've got to now now is the time to really reintroduce those apps now that Oculus can't keep the Quest on the shelves. Like mm. now's the time to be like, all right, so we've had this for a while, but just in case you want something like, are you bored? Are you bored in the house and you in the house bored? And you want to wa- <laughs> you want to watch some live sports? Yes. You, you, like you want to wa- you want to watch Conor McGregor get locked knocked out live? Here's oh, this yes, app. Please. Oh that oh that was delicious. Oh it felt <laughs> it was so good. Oh my god, it felt so good. His tears just they go down so well. Well, I'm not gonna give myself the points there because I feel like my mine is more of a VR idea than an AR idea. So I think I'm gonna give it to Swider, because that grocery store idea I love. And I, I just want my world to feel more more techy. Of course the points mean nothing in this game. Nobody keeps track of the points, and uh, it's all just for fun. <laughs> but I'm glad that you all enjoyed it. Uh <laughs> speaking of Swider, Swider, I want you to induct something now into the gadget hall of fame for new listeners this is a relatively new feature that we've been doing we've been asking our guests what is their favorite gadget of all time or or just gadget that's personal to them they have a lot of nostalgia around that they want to induct into our little fake museum of tech that we're building so swider you're up this week so you asked me to do this yesterday and i stayed up all night tossing and turning i I wow really wanted to get a good one wow Um, and (laughs) <laughs> uh, I thought about like the original iPhone because yeah, that deserves to be in there, or something a bit newer like the DJI Osmo Pocket. I really like that, and I think it's um, an underrated gadget. But that's a little too new. I so I went with a, something a lot more personal, and it's a a pair of Tech Radar emblazoned <laughs> headphones. Oh my uh, god! I, those are the headphones you were wearing when I first met you. That is true. <laughs> we I, sat on I, a I panel to together and everything. Right. I used to be known as the guy who wore these Astro A38 Bluetooth headphones. They were actually a, the most compact version of, of the Astro headphones they made uh, before they got bought by Logitech. And I guess Logitech figured out, wow, this doesn't make any money. We shouldn't <laughs> be making these um, because they were for mobile gamers. And really, that wasn't someone that was back then was uh, my 2014 era. They, they weren't really buying this. And so they're a little bit outdated these days, and I don't know if they hold the charge anymore. Um, even when I wore them, I, I don't think I used them very much. They were more of a fashion statement around my <laughs> neck. Um, I love that. If, if I went on Twitter or Instagram and I, or Facebook and didn't, if I posted a photo and it didn't create, it didn't have my Tech Raider headphones, people were like, do you, do you still work for Tech Raider? Did you get fired? What happened? So, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but, they're now mounted on a wall uh, these days, and uh, I've retired them, and now they're going in the Hall of Fame. Well, if you want to see those headphones for yourselves, listeners, then head to uh, at Matt Swider on Twitter and uh, check them out, because they are something oh to God. behold. The lovely. I remember those, because like, as someone who also <laughs> wears their he- headphones, A, because I love my music, and B, when I'm on the show floor, people do not know me without a pair of headphones. I was, I felt like I met a kindred spirit, and that was when Swider and I officially became best friends. It is true. It is also the 2014 version of Cherie's now business networking app that I turned out from uh, from (laughs) AI. It's just just tech radar around your neck instead of above your head. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, All right, then, without further ado, guys, let's head into the news then of the week. And Swider. The S21, Samsung's new flagship phones, are out in the world. You've got one there right in your hand. It's the S21 Ultra. I know you reviewed it for us on site. Tell us all about them. Are they living up to the hype of what a Samsung flagship phone should look like in 2021? I think the S21 Ultra is one of the best Android phones, if not the best right now. I I personally would rate it as the best. Um, And that's a lot to do with its camera. Um, it may not always take the best photo compared to an iPhone, but in certain scenarios it will, and that definitely when uh, you have the camera zoom um, and you're you're going into, um, I'd say about thirty times zoom in good light, ten times zoom in low light, those photos still work. Now on an iPhone, you usually have uh, ten times digital zoom, 
and their your image breaks apart uh 12 times on the iPhone Pro uh, 12 Pro Max um just the camera is just amazing and this phantom black version uh everybody made fun of it because Samsung spent nearly 3 minutes to talking about how they made uh, a phantom black version of the phone <laughs> um and it was just ridiculous i got it in my hand and i was like okay no there's there's something to rave about it's samsung's best looking phone uh the only downsides are it's expensive but not as expensive as last year's s20 ultra um so it's 200 dollars cheaper uh in the u.s and uh so uh, the s20 ultra was uh overpriced for and it was also uh a bit hobbled but this one is uh a little bit cheaper but still expensive the other downside no micro sd card slot you'll see in our youtube comments on the uh some of the hands-on reviews for example they people are saying no micro sd no sale mm. people rely on that but it's a small contingent of people if samsung is you know filling that space with more battery or making it sleeker or what whatnot i'm okay with that trade-off but a lot of pe- people aren't and uh yeah overall great phone we gave it 4.5 uh stars out of five and uh i would definitely recommend upgrading to this my uh in my building my uh doorman is eyeing this every day he's always talking about it <laughs> he's like that's my next phone i'm upgrading from i think he has the uh s8 that era right. so he's he's due for an upgrade yeah it's interesting right i think less and less people now are considering that they have to upgrade yearly for these phones right that's just not a thing like it was when the iphones first started coming out and stuff so and you know i know i know for the for the sort of base version of the s21 not the ultra the camera module is the exact same between the s20 and the s21 right so are there significant differences here? Like if you had an S20 Ultra right now, would you really be considering switching out for an S21 Ultra? No. Um, and the gap between the regular version and the Ultra has increased significantly over mm. the past um, year. And before, we actually recommended the S20 Plus. And now we're recommending the S21 Ultra, mostly due to price. And that gap has just increased. Yeah. Um, and just I in the review, uh, I called this the everything phone, uh, Samsung's everything phone, because it has everything, it, you know, has the curved display that's curved, but this year not too curved. So it's like perfect. The design is great. The, you know, it has, uh, you know, five cameras total. Uh, it has the in-screen fingerprint uh, sensor. So that's underneath the display. It just has full HD uh, or quad HD and um, uh, 120 hertz refresh rate it just has everything that you can throw at a phone um but you have to pay for it you know it, it's going to be expensive yeah doesn't absolutely have and a pen it doesn't come with a pen but i was just doesn't... about to move on to this it can use the s pen you just have to buy it separately that's so, correct so does this spell the end of sheree's beloved note series of phones are we going to see the notes drop away and samsung just focus on their S series and their foldable series, letting kind of the middle ground, which is now the Note, fall away. What do we think, Cherie? If they do that, I'm going to write the biggest nasty <laughs> gram. Like, they, like I don't want a, fo- I don't want a foldable yet. I don't trust them. Like, I need to see more. I need to see more. Uh, solid build, solid build quality. Uh, and functionality. Like, I like them in theory. I'm just not ready to make that leap. And if the um, if like the S twenty one, if there's no place to put the pen, you're going to lose it, and you're going to be buying it over and over and over again. So that's just stupid. <laughs> no, you just need to spend the extra extra and get the case that holds the pen as well. Mm. That's totally justifiable, right? <laughs> Everybody looks or, very or, unhappy or. on this call. <laughs> 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 or 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 you just keep the form factor that has the little um housing for the pen and keep it moving. <laughs> oh wow! Well, if they added a hole for the pen and not added and and took away the SD card slot as well, that would have been people would have been even more furious. I'm sure. <laughs> also, <laughs> that would be crazy. yeah, no, I I need my micro SD. Like I look forward to expanding my phones to ridiculous amount of memory that I will never ever use. But I, it's just a comforting feeling to know that it's there. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so the Ultra, am I right in thinking that is twelve hundred dollars? Uh yes, and 
it's uh it's still two hundred dollars cheaper than last year's phone, which just why why they charge that much for that phone? Yeah. And also, <laughs> last year's phone was uh the the camera uh didn't have excellent focus like this one does, so that's fixed. Um, but yeah, I I agree with Sheree in that the um I don't want the note to disappear. I think it will happen eventually, and it will happen once the fold um becomes the dominant phone or or it becomes a, a mainstream phone with the fold phones right now you don't have that 100 times zoom you don't even have you have like three times zoom um so you're actually making sacrifices if you're going with a, a fold phone uh once that becomes a phone where you're not making any sacrifices and it has all those mainstream features uh among samsung flagships then i think they are actually due to retire uh, because they'll have the due to retire the note because they'll have two phones that are kind of competing with each other and mm. then the fold. So they don't need three phones. So I, I just don't think it happens this year. I just do not want to see how much that phone costs when it comes out. The foldable phone with all the bells and whistles. My God. Uh, but speaking of daunting price tags, segue. Ooh. Moving on to Cherie yes. and her many, many laptop reviews coming out this week. Many so very expensive many. gaming laptops. So many. Um, so we reviewed six of the uh a hundred uh, I forgot how many uh NVS said were coming out, but it's a lot. Uh but we reviewed six of those new 30 series laptops or laptop mag, of course. Ha 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 ha. Pop. <laughs> um I personally reviewed three of them: the Alienware M17 R4, the Asus ROG. Flow X13 and the MSI G's S66 Stealth, and I had a blast with all three. Um, all of them had 3080s, and that was bad. Like, so Bill, who works over at Tech Radar, he was kind enough to do uh, testing between the desktop and the mobile chips. They are not the same. Uh, one is obviously more powerful than the other. So, you, I, I like, I'm not going to, uh, um, question your intelligence and make you think of course it's the desktop <laughs> but uh 3080 30 series is much pow more powerful than its predecessor the 20 the 20 series uh i had a blast particularly with the asus rog flow x13 uh because it is an itty bitty 13 inch laptop that is packing oh dear god it is packing one of amd's new 5000 series chip so i was getting the best of both worlds with this little laptop so i it had a 59 a 5980 hs which is their one of their new uh gaming uh processors which was seriously kicking out the power in the performance uh it, but the laptop itself was saddled with a 1650 nvidia chip which is like wop, wop, when it comes to uh gaming but 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 uh, to sweeten this pot, Asus is bundling this laptop, which my version costs thirty two ninety nine, with a the tiniest little eGPU I have ever seen in my life. It is itty bitty. It, it is adorable. Like I would have just pinch its little cheekies every time I see it. The uh, XG Mobile, and somehow they packed a thirty eighty into this tiny tiny enclosure, and they like. The two of these things, they come together to form the gaming laptop version of Voltron, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's like, it, it all formed the head. Like, it's this whole thing. But <laughs> no, it's actually not a whole thing. Like, you literally plug it in and press a button, and you're, you're ready to play. But I like to think of, like, I like to have the anime, like, draw it in my mind. <laughs> That's just me. Anyways, you hook it up, and now this, um what was once a wimpy little 13 inch laptop turns into this beefy beefer <laughs> um, gaming laptop that can hang with the likes of alienware and msi and razor and the like and it was kicking butt on our review i was i was pleasantly surprised uh without the uh xg mobile attached it got six hours and 27 minutes on our battery life test and uh it's a 4k display and this laptop is a convertible so it is one of those few convertible gaming laptops on the market so asus just was like you know what let's just kitchen sink this let's make it <laughs> let's make let's make it small let's give it a 4k touch panel let's make it convertible like just yeah like and you know what 
let's really make a game. Make a tiny GPU and slap that <laughs> son of a bitch on there. And there, and there you have it. You have the X, the X13 Flow, the XG Mobile, Friend Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Starting at twenty nine at two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars, but there's also the Supernova version that I reviewed that is uh, thirty two ninety nine. Wow. Okay, so loads of numbers in there, loads of awesome tech. The, my question is, thirty two ninety nine is an insane price point, right? If you're looking to get a machine primarily for gaming, why would you go for this thing over a PS five, Xbox Series X? Regardless of the fact whether or not you can actually find them in stock anywhere. <laughs> yeah, because, well, A, PC Master Race. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> like, so there's that. And B, uh, like, as Cyberpunk has attested to, you just might want to play on PC first until, <laughs> until, the, until the actual <laughs> next-gen games come out. Not the, oh, PS4, and we've got a patch coming someday over the rainbow, uh, maybe February 31st. Who knows when it's coming? Like and with PC, you know, out the box. Oh well, well, it's if I've got these specs, I can play it, and it's gonna look fantastic. And that's always my worry with PC gaming, right? It'll look fantastic today. I know in five years' time, I'm still gonna be able to play stuff on my PS5, and that concerns me with PC gaming, right? Like in five years' time, when Cyberpunk 2 comes out, God forbid. Am I going to be able to play it on these laptops? How long, realistically, do you think these laptops can can hold water? Ah, uh, I think I think five years is that sweet, but like it's that point where you need to start uh, taking old yellow to the back of the barn and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, but that's it. I mean, three and a half grand on something that's gonna last five years seems like a lot, right? I don't know. I mean, mm. like, in, I mean, you could just grand- relegate it to doing turbo tax and spreadsheets. Yeah, like or like it'll still be able to do video editing. It'll still be able to do all yeah. the all that sweet stuff. But like depending on how uh by then we might be at 8K. And theoretic like I haven't seen any 8K games or actually maybe I should do Project Cars cuz I know that could do 8K. That's a t- like note to self. But um <laughs> to see how 3080 handles that and uh if it could do it now, it'll be able to do it later. Fair enough, fair enough. Adam, coming to you then. I know you're you kind of dabble in all worlds of gaming, but also I consider do. yourself a member of the PC Master Race. Any of these stats, any of these numbers, picking up your interest enough to drop $3,300 on one of these machines? If I hadn't spent nearly that amount on a new puppy, then maybe. <laughs> but unfortunately, I have not got a lot of cash right now. Uh, my problem with PC gaming, as much as I love it, is as soon as I have to drop those settings from anything other than high, I start looking at other parts to upgrade and it just becomes an extremely expensive process. However, that being said, it is still, if you want the very best performance and graphics you can get, particularly for multi-platform games, yeah, you, can, you can't beat it. So that always brings me back, annoyingly. But yeah, I don't <laughs> think I'll be dropping that much on a gaming laptop anytime soon. Absolutely, absolutely. And you briefly mentioned it in there, Sheree, but of course, the kind of joke benchmarking test for PC games or PC gaming machines up until now has been Can It Run Crisis. Is Cyberpunk really the new version of that? Is that what we're testing <laughs> stuff on now? Um, that's one of the games I test on because like I like now you gotta think about can it run RT can you get ray tracing? Can it ray mm. trace? <laughs> <laughs> um so you can can it can it run DX12? <laughs> so you um actually and isn't crisis supposed to be coming out with another crisis, another just barn burner of a uh like hey. Let me blow all those components out that yeah. you that you lovingly put thermal paste all over. Let me just <laughs> overheat the hell out of them. But do you have liquid nitrogen? Then you won't be able to play this game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. All right, Matt, I'm bringing you back into the conversation here, Swider. Yep. iPhones are damaging pacemakers, or or the MagSafe feature in an iPhone could risk people's pacemakers. What are we thinking about this, Matt? Is it a serious concern or is it being blown out of the water a little bit? I've heard so much conflicting information about this, including that it's not just the iPhone 12s. It's all iPhones and all phones in general. Um, But I think that you shouldn't have your phone that close to your heart anyway. Um, (laughs) And just be extra cautious if you have a pacemaker. That's the wisdom that I can bestow upon people is uh, maybe we shouldn't have these in our pockets and everywhere close to our bodies. 
because uh, uh, I we'll, we'll see what happens to me in the long run because I usually have six phones all around me at all times. So <laughs> you I are the test case for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I'm gonna be a good study in about <laughs> you know 20 years. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, don't do what he did. He is patient zero for having six phones. <laughs> Cherie, what are we thinking? I, I knew you had something to say on this. So two things came to mind when I first read the story, and they're both hilarious, at least to me. <laughs> um, one, how hilarious is it that uh, Apple is doing the purge on the on folks with pacemakers? <laughs> 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 harsh, harsh. Until they come out with their own pacemaker in that's two years' time, exactly, that isn't effect. Exactly, that's, that's exactly the next part of that bit. Uh, number t- <laughs> number two uh, brought, made me think of Antenna Gate when uh, Apple told us we were holding our phones raw. What do you even need a heartbeat for? You've got you've got a <laughs> you've got an iPhone 13 with MagSafe. What do you what do, what do you need? A, like wait, we'll we'll put this fancy little gadget in there that'll shield. We'll give you a little heart heart shield. You wussy and everything. Will be- <laughs> that that's when I that's when I left Apple behind the uh, the holding your phone wrong gate. That's when I was like, oh, you I were can't. early. You were out early. Yeah, I, I left early because when they told me that and they sent out oh, those little rubber you know, um, case that you could put around yeah. the edge. I was like, I'm done. Like, a company cannot tell me how to hold a phone if you've designed it wrong. <laughs> and now they're trying to kill people with pacemakers, so I feel like I made the right decision. Well, yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, I don't think they were the first to do this. So I unboxed the Galaxy Fold uh, 2 sort of towards the end of last year, and one of the first things I noticed on there is a big sticker on the front of the phone as you unbox it that says, hey, if you have a pacemaker, this thing has magnets in it, be careful and like oh. seek medical advice before you use this phone. Um, so it kind of surprised me when I saw this pop up in the news cycle that like, yeah, Apple weren't actually the first to do this uh, or to come out with this potentially being an issue, um, which makes me wonder, you know, what is the future of phones? If, if people decide this is a make or break situation right now, do we really see Apple removing MagSafe from their future phones or do we really see companies stepping away from foldable devices or devices that use magnets going forward? Shree, what do you think? No like it because it's a money it's a money thing it's just like oh well i guess you don't get a mat you don't get a foldable you get a yeah you you get a oh like you value your life phone you don't get the cool phone <laughs> people will be rejecting pacemakers in hospitals because they'll be like i got iphone 12 like i forget to get rid of that thing come on <laughs> unreal unreal uh moving on then to some xbox news for everybody earlier on this week Xbox announced that they were raising the price of their Xbox Live Gold subscription. This is however much you pay each year to access the online services that Xbox has to offer. So they announced that they were doubling the price, right, I think, Adam? And then they (laughs) very quickly announced, oh, no, we're not actually going to do that because it made you all sad and angry. So we're going to placate to you, basically, right? Yeah, so it might be one of the quickest U-turns in history, I believe. (laughs) And thank God, because, yeah, it did not go down well. You cannot just double the price especially can you imagine if they are stuck by the price hike after they've released their financial uh, earnings report for record numbers as well basically yeah that would have not gone down well but yeah they tried to uh, um raise the price for xbox live gold which you need for uh, online play and you also get two free games usually a month but if you have xbox game pass particularly ultimate you get xbox live gold as part of that so the uh, speculation it's not speculation they were doing it was they raised the price to push everyone over extremely firmly to uh, get Xbox Game Pass. And uh, the good res- the end result was actually quite good because previously for free-to-play games on Xbox, you did need Xbox Live Gold, mm-hmm. and that wasn't the case on the other platforms. And now they have got rid of that. So you can play Fortnite now if you have an Xbox Series S, which is the cheapest way to get an Xbox, really. You can play Fortnite without that subscription. So that is one good thing to come out of it. But yeah... It was bizarre. The statement they came out was bizarre, saying, you know, we messed up. We, we didn't realize. It's like, how? how? Like, who, <laughs> who signed this? Who signed off on this? But yeah. yeah. Yeah, it did all seem bizarre. And, and in the same week that sort of news hits that Xbox have confirmed that they've got 18 million subscribers to Game Pass. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. It was a pretty transparent ploy in, into getting people over to Game Pass, right? But even Game Pass, to a certain extent, encourages you to not worry about if you've got an xbox or not if you've got a pc you can play a lot of these games if you've got a phone even you're going to start to be able to play a whole bunch of these games through their cloud streaming service their sort of next netflix style game streaming service 
And so, yeah, what, what was the thought here? They would have been better off just coming out and saying Xbox Live Gold is no longer a thing. It's just yeah. Game Pass. Yes. And like, that's our one service. And if you yeah. want in the Xbox ecosystem, that's your way in. And there was rumors about that because obviously they removed the 12 month subscription for Xbox Live Gold. And everyone mm-hmm. was like, great, they're going to just combine it. It's gone. But no, they decided to do what <laughs> no one wanted them to do or expected. But thankfully, rolled back. So, yeah. And it would have been a real shame because I think Microsoft and the Xbox brand in general has been a really good value proposition. I mean, you've got fantastic backwards 100%. compatibility. All your accessories work. Game Pass is still the best deal in gaming by a country mile. And you have a cheaper next-gen console if you want to get it. And you can take the caveats of the Xbox Series S. So, yeah, Microsoft dodged a big bullet, which they uh, fired at themselves. <laughs> I love but that so much. But they always do this. It's just, it's Microsoft being mi- like, when it comes to Office, they have the, the marketing and the messaging down pat. But the minute gamers, like, it's just fumble, 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 fumble. Like, lest we forget the always on debacle. Lest oh we, like, <laughs> yeah, like, they're not great with their messaging, but it, but it blows my mind. Like, this would have had to have got signed off by so many people, you would have thought, right? Yeah. The conversation must have been had. Hey. People aren't going to be happy about this. What are we going to do about it? Was the decision really made in that moment that, oh, we'll just U-turn on it within 24 hours? Was that the game plan? Or did they uh, really not think about it? I don't know. I think someone Leroy Jenkins this decision. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody uh, who has access to the Twitter account, just put it out. Just put it out there in the world. um, Because someone like, and I think of this Chappelle show sketch, it's like, like, and it was the pop copy. It was like, well, what about the customers? Screw the customers. That's why, like, it's so, like, someone was just like, we're just going to push everyone over instead of, like, instead of, you know what, as months go on, let's make this year the year that we really hammer down the virtues of Xbox Game Pass, really explain the te- explain what it's doing, Xbox Game Pass for PC, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, regular, ex- like, instead of doing that, no, 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 no. Also, the gall of double it. You yeah, know, how much yeah. we charge? Yeah, like, double. Let, yeah. Like, let's what? raise the price. Okay, okay, okay. How much we talking? Like ten dollars more? Twenty dollars? We want to make this. No, we want to make this unattractive. Double it. And don't, <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head. And don't give them more games. Like, don't let them. Like, because we could sweet the pot and be like, okay, you're paying double, but you'll get four or maybe six games free a month. No, it's the same deal, just double. Like, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> It is crazy, but you know, and it is strange on the back of a year where Xbox has been so pro-consumer, right? Game Pass is mm. undoubtedly a fantastic value proposition. Leroy You're getting... Jenkins! <laughs> <laughs> You're getting every Microsoft published or Microsoft developed, I should say, game day one on Game Pass, which includes this week's release, The Medium. And Sharia, I know you've been looking into this game, keeping an eye on it. What are our thoughts on The Medium? Is it well, worth picking up Game Pass for? I think you should pick up Game Pass for it. Um, I have not been playing it. Uh, my brave reporter, my brave, my, ooh, excuse me, my brave <laughs> senior writer, Robbie Tabari, who has recently got a promotion. So congratulations to him. Congrats. So, um, he uh reviewed this for us. The embargo just broke. Uh, it it it, it it's a game that comes with a trigger warning, and mm. so once once we get there, it's like oh, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so it's like so basically i'm not going to give too many spoilers because i uh we did give it a 3.5 uh because the, it lacks combat and like robbie feels that the ending they kind of painted themselves into a quarter tried to leave room for a sequel mm. uh it's kind of more of an interactive story with light puzzle solving is there are some combat uh, portions but not anything me- like if you're looking for a Resident Evil uh, alternative this isn't it like mm. yes it's scary but on the psychological horror type of scary not the brains type of scary <laughs> um, or tall or even tall lady scary because every- oh, yes. everyone loves tall lady right now um, scary or sexy we can't decide uh, yeah, a little bit of both a little bit of both like <laughs> like, it's, like I mean Fear and the little more they they they're just so they're so close together. Those that that range of feeling, that exhilaration, and that huh, and like, but that's for another show. <laughs> <laughs> that's for a smart glasses AR app right there. Boom chicka wah wah indeed. Um, 
so the game takes place in Poland. Uh, you are the titular medium, and you are called to this place uh, because another medium, because you thought that you were the only one, you are rarely ever the only one. And it turns out that this um, rundown resort um, used to be involved in some horrific uh, actions or uh, events during the Holocaust, and you're trying to cleanse that. Uh, and you're running across all types of manner of ghosts and goblins and ghouls. And the cool, the cool thing is this game is kind of like uh, two bro that two brothers game or that uh, one where you're two convicts where you, there's a split screen. So you'll mm. be minding your business, playing traditionally, and you'll get to a place with a whole bunch of spirit energy. The media will hold her, he her head as she is getting a migraine, and the world just splits. Yeah. And you're controlling both of yourselves, because it's still you. It's just real you and spiritual you uh, trying to get through obstacles in the game. And you have to, you can switch focus because the answer might be in the real world. It might be in the spiritual world. Uh, you just don't know. Uh, we play, uh, we found that we were able to get a full 60 frames on it when it was played traditionally, but once it split, uh, whether we were on desktop or whether we were, and this goes for, uh, 30, 30 series and it goes for, uh, 20 series, uh, it would drop to around 30 frames per second because you're, oh, ba you're, assi you're essentially kind of playing two games at the yeah. same time. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the feature that this game's hanging his hat on, right? This idea that the two worlds split in two. Um, and of course, I think this game is probably getting quite a bit more attention because it is technically the first next generation Xbox exclusive out on Xbox. And obviously we were expecting to have Halo Infinite by now. Is cool. this really the game that's going to bring people into that Xbox ecosystem? Is this the game that's going to satisfy maybe people who got an Xbox for Christmas and they're still waiting on those new games to come through? What do you think, Adam? Absolutely not. Um... And, and that would be unfair to the game because it, it's not sure. a triple A developed title. You know, it's one of those single A or double A, if you use that those kind of terminology when you describe video games, which I know a lot of people do. But for me, it's, it's, it's one of the strengths of Game Pass again, because like Netflix, the amount of crap I watch on Netflix that I wouldn't, have wa I wouldn't watch if I didn't have Netflix. Yeah. Game Pass just gives me that, okay, this is new, gives me something new to play. And it might not be the best game, but I'll definitely have fun with it. And it's definitely a game that there's no way I would go out and spend, you know, £40 or $50 or however much it is. But because it's on there, because I subscribe to the service, I can give it a go. And to be honest, there's been a lot of games that I've discovered that way, which I've really, really enjoyed and wouldn't have given a chance, particularly games that didn't do very well critically. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to sell you on the Xbox Series X. And I think that would be unfair to put that tag Absolutely. on it. But yeah, it's, it's a nice to have, you know, Xbox definitely needs more exclusives even if they are on pc as well but yeah bring on halo infinite as far as i'm concerned yeah i agree with adam um this is a really good effort by bloober team uh the de the developer um i want to see more from them they also did the blair witch game uh i people people like to be scared and this also speaks to xbox's um enduring commitment to indie titles uh and it is ray trace so as decrepit as that uh re that resort looks it is beautiful in its dilapidation so yeah. like it and it's not a full price game it's like 50 dollars. so you don't have to feel bad like oh my god i'm spending i'm spending uh all this money on this mid-tier game it like it's it's priced well um it's got some interesting themes it does have some trigger warnings so be aware read the trigger warnings before you purchase this game uh because it does deal with some dark trauma and you you will feel a little squicky if not prepared yeah i think you guys are absolutely right you know like you say game pass just offers you all this content and you can dive in for an hour and go nope this game's not for me and be done with it and and mm -hmm. that's totally fine right like you say the amount of stuff i've watched on netflix that i would never have gone out and actually <laughs> watched like is insane so i think there's only benefit right to it being on game pass it will find an audience i'm sure on game pass yeah. a load of people that are really intrigued and, and interested in it and that will create team blooper fans and, and they will go on to play the next game and the next game and the next game so exactly all good news on that front our last little news story then before we close out of here uh what is going on with apple and tv so apple uh have a thing now where if you buy a new apple product like the iphone 12 you get a free trial of apple tv plus and they've announced this week that they're extending that free trial to june just for everybody so if you bought one of the newest iphones you are now getting that extension 
for free. Although we know nothing in this world is free. So, Swider, what do we think is going on here? Have you used Apple TV Plus? Are we interested in it? Is it rubbish? And why are they giving it away for free for so long? I know exactly why they're doing it, even though they don't tell us. Um, <laughs> it's because... <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, the morning show is actually their one good show. One good show. They, they have, like, maybe two. It depends on your interest in sure. uh, various things. But... Um, that was their star show, and it continues to be their best show. Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Steve Carell. Great, great kind of inside baseball of what happened at news programs, even though it's fictional, sure. um, uh, morning news programs. And um, it's, it's really great. That premiered in, I wouldn't say November 1st of, not last year, but the year before. And then season two was supposed to come out that following November when everybody's subscription expired. Um, and to watch that new season of Morning Show, season two, you're going to have to renew after getting a, a free year with uh, a, an Apple device purchase. I was, I was going to do it. Um, but then the pandemic hit, and you know they, they couldn't finish filming season two, so they extended it to, I think, February, uh, January. Um, and then, pandemic continues, they have to extend it again. So that's why I feel like they keep extending it. It's all hinging on more content, and by more content, I mean more morning show. Also, Ted Lasso is pretty good. I, I, I can't <laughs> no, I'm just saying they need more content before they stick me with a bill. Otherwise, I'm going to cancel. So yeah. it, it's a mm -hmm. good strategy on their part. Um, but yeah, they're just waiting for Jennifer Aniston and, and crew to film the season, the rest of the season. Yeah, especially when there are so many streaming services now and it feels yeah. like there's a new one every other week. You know, we've just been talking about Xbox Game Pass, right? That's on my direct debit that comes out every month. Um, Netflix is on there and, and all these things are on there. If I saw Apple TV pop on there and realized that I haven't looked at it for six months, there's no way I'm renewing it. See, Xbox Game Pass screwed me as well because I think last time I was on the podcast, I said I didn't need Disney Plus, but Xbox Game Pass also has perks. And one of the perks was 30 days of Disney Plus. Yeah. So I got Disney Plus. Yeah, you did. And now I subscribe. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> I told you it was coming. <laughs> yeah. And she, you know, you were completely right. It's great. I'll be watching Simpsons, Mandalorian, yeah, various you films. Are. And now I'm paying for another <laughs> friggin' subscription. So thanks a lot, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Flash absolutely. Disney. Yeah, I think Disney Plus is a really interesting one, right? It seems like their release schedule hasn't been all that affected by covid it seems like their stuff's pretty far out anyway um and one division landing now as well and i'm i'm full-on obsessed with one division oh my I'm god it. i I've cannot starved, wait starved of marvel for so long I cannot wait for this next episode what's your spicy take adam you were gonna say something that would annoy me and you restrained yourself i, I don't want every podcast of it you know Come entry on. for me to be slagging off marvel i tried to watch the first episode i Why got like like, half, like three quarters of the way through, and like i was this? just like i don't get it what and do you mean you don't get it, it? <laughs> I, I don't get it you're a fool adam you're a fool i've just looked at the clock and we are running so long so in classic gareth fashion i'm gonna speed us along a uh, quick word from our sponsors and we'll be right back so this week's noise cancelling podcast is also in association with razor but specifically the razor book 13 and sheree has touched this thing I have touched it, and it is a very exciting laptop. So first things first, let's 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 just get to know what we're talking about here. So the Razer Book 13 is the first 100% productivity laptop from Razer. And yes, I know, uh, Razer does have a 13-inch laptop. It's called the Blade Stealth, and it, it, it was kind of for work, but this is really a true productivity laptop it's for working on the go for mobile professionals and of course home office use uh, but i feel like there's more coming right of course so razor has teamed with intel to develop the razor book 13 and it's razor's very first evo certified laptop so that evo certification brings a whole bunch of cool features like it's very long battery run time when we tested it it lasted 13 hours and 14 minutes it's actually the longest lasting razor laptop that we've ever tested at laptop mag which is awesome you get instant wake which is less than a second to resume power and the quick recharge functionality which means you charge it for 30 minutes you get four hours of usage that's, that to me is like smartphone, which is pretty good, right? It's very good. Plus, we get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which 
because we're living in the future. It's awesome. You get a full size HDMI port and you get fast Wi-Fi 6, a good microphone and HD webcam. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff in it, but does that mean it's going to be super heavy, sit in a bag, hurt my shoulder? No, absolutely not. Razer has never been about being a big bulky laptop. It's not going to start with the Razer book. It actually weighs 3.1 pounds, which is really, really light, especially considering that the laptop is made of a full CNC aluminum chassis. Beautiful to look at. Uh, and we've got to talk about those chroma keys. They're beautiful. They're customizable. 16.8 million colors that you can play with. And that display. The display is bright and vibrant. So vibrant that you can use it outdoors. You've got a 16.10 aspect ratio. So you're going to really get the most out of that real estate. Uh, and it's just a beautiful laptop to use uh whether you're in the office whether you're at home uh and it's it's just a solid beautiful piece of work and so why would a 16 by 10 screen ratio be useful that's like that's more than the normal widescreen that 16.10 form factor is so important because more screen who doesn't want more screen I want more screen, especially uh, if it's as bright, as vivid as the Razorbook 13's display. So, yeah, give me all of that. Uh, in addition, you have several resolutions that you can choose from. You've got a full HD plus and an ultra HD plus, and both screens are uh, touchscreen. So if you want to use a stylus or even use your finger, you can do that. And it adds even more functionality to an already productive, targeted laptop. So with that stated... If you are looking for a 100% productivity laptop that's lightweight, long-lasting, with a lovely display, the Razorbook 13 is your one-stop shop. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Noise Cancelling, and we are running straight now into the News Blast. If you are new to the show, this is a segment where I get 60 seconds to run off as many news stories from the week that we haven't already talked about as humanly possible, and I'm going to try and beat Gareth's record of 13. Is that still the current record, or did somebody beat it? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, I, well, good. Uh, yes, it's 13. Let, okay, let me, uh, okay. Somebody bring up a timer for me. That's what I'm doing. While I do my vocal exercises. Me mommy right. mama. <laughs> <laughs> and we're I'm gonna count you down. Here we go. And three, two, one. Philips have unveiled a whole bunch of new TVs, including new OLED and mini LED TV lineups, and they all come with Ambilight. Realme is launching a new phone in February, and it's gonna be a rival to the Samsung S21 Ultra Lookout Swider. Chrome is getting an amazing new extension on Android devices that allow you to tag articles to read them later on. Very cool indeed. Apple HomePod Mini is finally getting a feature, which it should have had from the start, let's face it, that allows you to hand off music from your iPhone to your Apple HomePod Mini. Fantastic. Cyberpunk 2077 gets official mod support because if you can't fix your own game, let the community do it for you. iPhone 13 range might support faster Wi-Fi 6E chips, and that just means faster connections, more reliable connections for everybody. No Time to Die, which is the new James Bond film, may need to do reshoots because they made a deal with Nokia to include the latest Nokia smartphones in the film, but now those aren't the latest Nokia smartphones anymore because the film's been so delayed. Just release the film. My God, just release the film. Sony's new Xperia Pro phones can access external monitors for their prosumer camera level, so if you have spent seven grands with on Time. Sony gear, then, ah, come on. Eight. 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 I'll take eight. eight. I'll take eight. I, in fact, I think it was seven and a half. I was only kind of halfway through that Sony story. But you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. And next week, we will have somebody else taking on the classic news blast. I'm just looking down the list here. Is there anything that we wanted to touch on in here that was kind of crazy? I mean, Adam, I want to come to you on this one. Oh, yeah. Resident Please. Evil Village, one of the most anticipated games of 2021. There's always that sort of big, crazy, super special edition of the game. But yeah. this year, Resident Evil, and apparently this is the thing they've done before and I've never noticed. Oh, yeah. Is letting you buy a coat so you can kind of look like one of the characters in the game. What is going on with this new story? First of all, what the hell did they do to Chris Redfield's face? I'm tired of him having all this damn <laughs> digital plastic surgery. Um, <laughs> he does look completely different in every game and I think yeah. Adam has frozen here and has, has dropped off the podcast unfortunately it was a good time um, to go to him but yes so the, I'll give you the base of this story then this story there is now a coat that you can buy that is sort of in the Resident Evil game so you can look like one of the characters and it will cost you $1,200 it will cost you the same 
as a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra Swida. Is that a decent deal, do you think? Um, only if you're really, really cold and desperate for a coat. <laughs> like, it's just a coat, isn't it? it I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think it looks like that good of a coat. Like, for like, 1200 surely you can get, like, a custom-made, tailored coat. Because if I'm doing $1,200, I'm getting a Sherling or something like that. Um, I, ooh, this is, oh, oh. Listen, the person who doubled the price of Xbox Live thinks this is a good deal, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they got, That's the same guy. It's the same guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he has that job, too. Company. Incredible. I want that job, I think. Um. All right, then, guys, we, we are in the last sort of five minutes. Adam is just gone. Adam is so gone. I, he's not coming back, but that's OK. We're moving into our final segment then. And again, another new segment. Oh, Adam's back, is. everybody. There he Whee! is. Just as I went to you as well. Quickly, Adam, we, we've moved on from it, but we'll go back to it. What do you think about the Resident Evil coat? Are you getting one? Absolutely love it. I love coats that you can't button up, especially in the winter. <laughs> I love looking like my favorite video game characters who have impossible bodies that no one can obtain and yeah i have that one thousand five hundred dollars burning a hole in my pocket so cap yeah it's either that or a new puppy it's yeah. Well, yeah i've got one of those already so it's a <laughs> yeah. fantastic stuff so yes we are moving on to our final segment then this is a new segment it's called i'm sorry help me where i tell you all the thing that i don't understand i just don't get it you guys need to convince me that it's a good thing it's a good thing that we all should be excited about and i need to chat to you all about 5g I just don't get it. First off, not all 5G is made equal. I only found this out this week because of the Samsung S21 Ultra and different 5Gs working on different handsets in different places around the world. Swider, explain it to me. Why are there different versions of 5G? Uh, there are two versions. Uh, in the US, we have uh, sub-6, uh, and then we also have millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is something that so far has been basically exclusive to Verizon. They've been pushing that. Um, it's really, really fast. I get 1.7 gigabits per second, but only when I'm outside and basically directly underneath a light post that happens to have a 5G antenna right there. Sure. Um, if I go down half a block, it doesn't work. So the, it, it's very, very fast, but the distance it travels, very oh, small. Sure. So uh, the sub-6, uh, which is used by... AT&T, T-Mobile, and uh, eh, does Sprint really exist anymore? Who knows? Um, <laughs> but all of those use sub-6, and it can work everywhere, including indoors, something that millimeter wave cannot do. Um, what I think millimeter wave will be great for is uh, in stadiums. Uh, while sub-6 goes around, you know, 300 megabits per second, that's not much faster than 4G. Um, you know the millimeter wave can go a lot faster it, in stadiums uh along with my ar glasses that point me to the right seat that's going to be huge because when you're trying to download something at a stadium everybody's sucking up the bandwidth it's very slow it gets very laggy that's where that's going to be you know you have a big pool of people um but sub six it works indoors so you really want the best of both worlds and a lot of the phones when they first the uh, 5g phones came out they would sometimes have one or the other, and they'd be exclusive to certain carriers. Um, but I think uh, now that they both have both antennas, that's going to be um, a lot faster. And the reason overall you need 5G is um, not only can you download things faster, but you can just get things done more quickly. And that's really good for both you and the network because you're loading up that page more quickly, and then you're kind of using up less of the network time. Um, so in the end, it should be. Uh, you know, it's going to be more expensive, but it's also going to be uh, resources wise uh, cheaper for uh, a lot of the companies. So hopefully that won't uh, raise the prices too much. Well, that brings me on quite nicely to my second point, which is why I don't understand any 5G. I've heard that when everybody starts mig migrating over to 5G, my 4G is going to become better because of exactly what you just said. People are spending less time pinging the antennas, certainly the 4G antennas, right? Because they're all pinging 5G antennas. So my 4G is going to become more reliable and quicker. So why wouldn't I just stick around on 4G? Right. I think the devil is in the details of, sure, 4G will be more reliable than it is now, but it won't even touch 5G. And the 5G capacity should, you know, have that built in. And they should have known that, oh, once we get everybody migrated over, it should still be just doubly as fast as 4G, even with the people off that 4G network. So. 
Um, yeah, that's that's where I think it, it devils in the details of it'll be faster, but not nearly as fast as 5G. Fair enough. Well, look, it's inevitable at the end of the day, and that my next phone is going to be 5G compatible, and I'll probably have to end up on a contract that gives me 5G anyway. So I guess I don't have much of a choice in the situation. But Adam, I'm curious, are you rocking 5G yet? Do you have any interest in 5G whatsoever? No. Uh, not, well, I do, of course. I mean, faster downloads is the dream. I yeah. love speed. Got to go fast and all that. Got to go fast. But I live in the north of England where we still ride penny farthings and have horse-drawn <laughs> carriages. By That's the true. time 5G arrives, 6G will be already here. So yeah, I mean, 4G is still not great, to be honest, in most places up well, well where I am near uh, Leeds in yeah. Yorkshire. So yes, it would be nice. And of course, I hope it comes, but I'm not hopeful that it'll be widespread enough for me to benefit. And I need a new phone. Like you said, I've only got a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. I need an upgrade. Oh my goodness, you're going to end up with one of those S21 Ultras now that Swider's got. Um, that's an interesting point, right? Like 4G has been around for a while now. How long, realistically, Swider, do we think 5G is going to stick around until 6G comes, which is inevitable, right? I think they'll begin hyping it up maybe next year, two years from now. Which is crazy. And it won't actually be delivered until, you know, they did that with 5G. They, they hyped it up for several years and said, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then they said, we rolled it out, but you can't access it for another two years. And it, it, it took so long. So I, I feel like 6G, they'll begin talking about it within the next 12 months. Um, but we won't see something for another half a decade or more. Well, then I will see you in 12 months time when I come on the podcast to rant about why I don't think 6G is worth it. How's about that? But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Noise Cancelling Podcast. Sheree, if the people want to follow you and hear more of what you do, where can they go? Uh, the people can find me on Twitter and Instagram at MissSmith11. Uh, all right, MissSmith11. Uh, that <laughs> is M-I-S. I've had a lot of sugar this morning. I get it. it, it is I get it. So much sugar. M I S S Smith 11. Uh, and of course, go to Laptop Mag and read up all about those 30 series gaming laptops. Read about the new AMD 5000 series chips. Laptop then, laptop now, laptop forever. Fantastic stuff. And if you want to find out more about the S21 Ultra Swider, where can they go? Yeah, you can check out my photos. I posted one on Instagram at, at Matt Swider, S W I D E R for that semi-confusing last name <laughs> um so go to at matt Swider on instagram i'm also posting things on twitter but you can see the zoom photos i took uh, a bunch of them at the different presets uh and yeah those are where you can find the photos and like them and yeah i'll do more of them if you li like them good stuff and adam finally where can the people follow you you can find me on twitter at it's mr products that's capital i capital m capital p and you can also follow my puppy and i'm trying to find a handle but i can't find it i think it's at lily the pup the she pup on instagram but if you find my twitter you will find her she's there taking over everything and if you take away one thing from this episode it is go follow adam's puppy on instagram because it is the most adorable thing of what all kind time, of puppy literally. is it it's a japanese shiba inu oh my god a doge yeah well there we go and if you want to follow something much less appealing you can follow me on instagram and twitter i'm at matt p video on all of the things uh, but more importantly head to techradar.com read the articles go to techradar's youtube channel subscribe watch all the cool videos that we make uh we do work hard on them and we appreciate your feedback on everything speaking of which if you want to leave us feedback on the episodes please do rate us on spotify apple podcasts subscribe on all those services as well you can email Email us, <laughs> noise cancelling podcast at futurenet.com. Are we working on getting a, a better email for that? We probably should. Uh, yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. Maybe we will for next week, but probably not. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Thank you all for joining me on this week's podcast. And until next time, we will see you soon. Bye bye. 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 bye.